First of all, you have to you have to define bad form. Like if you watch me do my pull downs, I'm performing bad form in that it doesn't look like what you're taught when you first learn the movement. But I tell people, you know, when they question me about it, why do you do your pull downs like that? I say the same thing. I'm like, I'm not doing pull downs, actually. And that's where the mistake is made. I'm not doing pull downs. I'm doing something completely different that started with a pull down and now has evolved into something else. Um, it's called controlled cheating and it can be used to increase time under tension and overload, which is the reason I do things the way I do them. I'm pretty much making science my bitch, if you want to put it that way. I'm taking science and I'm spanking it. I'm actually, I, I'm, I'm getting the most out of the scientific tenets of overload and time under tension by putting a little body English on it that makes it more, not less, effective. And when people look at me do that pull down, they're thinking, well, you know, you're get, it's all lower back. It's no lower back. I feel none of it in my lower back. I feel the entire brunt in my lats. And everyone I've ever shown how to do that can't even raise their arms up the next day because they're so sore right where they want to be. So that's an example. Oftentimes you see things being done incorrectly. They are being done incorrectly. Like almost all the time you see bad form. It's because the person isn't educated. They don't have the mind to muscle communication to figure out that it's not hitting the muscle they want, want it to. And they have, and they just, they're resistant to learn, so they just keep doing it that way. Um, and, or, and or no one teaches them, ever, because they don't, they don't give a shit. The trainers don't give a shit. However, you can see some pretty crazy form with specialty exercises. And this, were, this is where a mistake is often made, where people are made fun of for doing things wrong, when they're actually just, they're modifying things. For instance, um, there was a guy at the Old Gold's Gym who would take a 180-pound dumbbell or a 200-pound dumbbell and get on the preacher bench and hold it like this and then just go and rock it. Now, the assumption was for all onlookers that he's a bodybuilder where he's trying to build his biceps. So they would all make fun of him behind his back. Someone actually filmed him one time, put it on YouTube, and there's a bunch of comments. Oh, look at this jerk off. The fact of the matter was, was that he was a world champion arm wrestler. And that was an exercise to increase tendon and ligament strength and the initial thrust at the beginning. And it works very effectively for that, but it looks like shit. And it looks like he's doing a, a wrong one-arm dumbbell uh, preacher curl. So it's easy to, to, to just assume that the person's doing wrong. And he didn't look like anything. He was kind of fat, so the assumption was made he doesn't know what he's doing across the board. But he actually was a very, it, it was a specialty that he was doing there for a very specific purpose, modified movement, and it works very well for that purpose, as a matter of fact. I do a lot of my movements like that, like my rocking leg extensions. Again, I can use twice the amount of weight for twice the amount of reps, and the, the time under tension is, is longer. Um, but it looks, it looks horrendous, but it really works. Anyone who's ever done it can attest to that. A lot of my movements have been modified that way. So onlookers, I mean, if I had no physique, I'd be laughed out of the gym on a daily basis. But um, these are things that I've developed over time that are distinctions that make the movement more effective, not less. So you have to make the, the, differen the differentiation between the two. And, and it can be, it can be a, uh, a fine line, actually. Topics the bodybuilding world doesn't talk about openly behind the scenes story at the state and national level, revelations about the psychology of competitive bodybuilding, hilarious anecdotes and profiles of some of the most colorful people in the sport, a personal accounting of what drove one man into this unique discipline, and much, much more in Beyond Raising the Bar, the new book by Dave Polsanella. I was thinking about some of the stories from my past, with Timmy and Kenny and all the characters in my life. There's been many, many characters in my life um, who were influence, influential to me coming up in the sport and uh, who were mentors to me and the things that we went through and did. And I thought of all of these compelling and interesting and humorous, um, sexually charged stories. And I thought, you know what? They should be told. This volume picks up where the Raising the Bar documentary trilogy leaves off. Order your copy today. Just click on the link below to be taken directly to the purchase page.
it's not an instructional thing by any means, but I think um, it can fuel someone who has a passion for bodybuilding. And I think um, anyone who's been in the sport a while will be able to relate to it. Um, a lot of the stories I think will ring true, and I think there's a lot of similarities between my stories and things that other bodybuilders uh, go through on their way up through the ranks. Uh, even people who can't relate, I think, will be entertained by it, because the stories are plucked and chosen due to their entertainment value. So I think there's something for everybody. Order your copy today. Just click on the link below to be taken directly to the purchase page.